Well, hello, hello, and welcome to Coffee Craft, where we're just topping off our equipment real quick on the XP on the uh, Guardian Farm, and oh, man, almost there. I got a couple of things to show off in the way of project updates, and uh, then I've got a few, and I've got a. Uh, long overdue project to work on so for yeah all right i turned that off and i thought i would have had enough to finish all of it all of it but apparently not um all right let's drop that in the sorting system that in the sorting system and that in the sorting system all right good And since I know what's coming next, we've been having some really weird connection problems, so this is me grabbing an extra stack of rockets, because that's probably going to be necessary. <laughs> Alright, that should last for a little bit. Oh, not crafting. Ender chest. There we go. Alright. And of course it's nighttime. Let me go climb up to the bed. We've been busy this weekend. We a few different projects. Uh, some of them got tore up and reworked from the last time you saw them. Some of them have... Um, some of them are definitely going to be... Well, they're going to be fun to see. And I'll just leave it at that. Let me first sleep. Look at all the connection warnings on my dashboard. And wonder if this is even going out. Oh, oh, fly! Fly! And that's why I grabbed a whole bunch of extra rockets. Alright. Huh. Look at that. It's an addition to the space below Arcadius's mob farm. Alright. Uh, where was the safe place to drop down? That goes there, so I should be able to drop in here. No, because that's where the pillar is. That means that I can drop in here. No, because I put a block there. I also put two of these jokers there. All right. Then this is where I try. Oh, oh, oh. Hello, server. Ground control to Major Tom. All right. Uh, over here, we've got a fun little sugarcane farm. I uh, got a little bit of redstone set up back that way. Let's see if I can carefully make my way back here. Yes, there we go. All right. So, we've got a little quad of sugarcane bits off on all four sides. we got some uh, glazed terracotta so the slime blocks don't stick to them. And two observers running the whole thing. If you remember from last week, I had been trying to power this off of the clock that's running the droppers. So, in other words, every time the clock up at the top triggered the droppers, it was going to uh, trigger the pistons. And that was an effort to cut down on... Uh, observers and make use of the existing redstone in the area. It turned out to be a bad idea. <laughs> uh, basically what was happening was that clock's running a little too fast and the sugarcane wasn't really growing. So instead, I've got an observer on this side, an observer on this side, and so when the middle sugarcane goes to three high on either side, it's going to trigger all four quadrants of this. So whichever one triggers, it's going to go into this repeater here, send it out full blast to all that redstone, and that's going to trigger all the sticky pistons. And, uh, and harvest everything except for the spot that I just, you know, pulled out. Because, of course. Uh, so the idea is that when somebody is AFKing over here and running the mob farm up above, it will also be generating sugarcane and and all that. Uh, the basically Arcadius was looking to uh, set up a, an area where he could start building his own rockets. So 
if you, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, all right, let me put this back here, that back there, and try my luck with the rockets again. Oh, 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 oh. oh okay, come on. Yeah, it's one of those days, guys. All right, you notice all those trap doors there? That is so that way only creepers will spawn on those levels because the trap doors cut down the height. That prevents zombies and other tall mobs from spawning. Creepers can fit under there and spiders can fit under there. Um, not all that worried about the spiders, even though we got the string farm off to the side. So that's a few levels of creepers Oop, flying into the wall. And uh, I'm going to stop doing anything that involves flying. That's part of why <laughs> I've got the plans for today that I do. Because, again, uh, I'm not sure if it's our internet service provider or somebody moving into the area sucking down all the bandwidth that uh, we have available to us here. But, uh, yeah. All right. I know there's another minecart down the other way. I hope I can get out in time. We... Instead of having an ice boat road that was glitching out, and instead of a very, very, very long walk, now have a powered rail that will take us from the portal to the, f the uh, I keep wanting to call it the Angry Fish Farm, because that's what Ray S. calls it. From the Guardian Farm over there, back to the main nether hub. I've still got to work on a proper on-off station. I'm going to do something very similar to what we have going for... Um, for the main rail station, which is the next thing on the agenda to show off. Because that took up the bulk of the weekend. So we got that farm going uh, Wednesday, I think, somewhere in the midweek. Uh, went through a few different redesigns and, <laughs> and a lot of slime blocks. And just a uh, a lot of back and forth on different different designs with that that particular deal. And that's what we ended up with. It remains to be seen how effective it will be. Um, probably not going to be seen. We still got to work on the collection system for that whole farm. And Arcadius has got to decide on the pattern that he wants to do for his walls. Because uh, that is definitely going to need the walls. The plus side to using slime blocks to break off the sugar cane is it makes sure that the sugar cane doesn't drop on the sand and then you you know so you collect everything the that's the upside the downside being um it will push it out into the ocean if you don't have walls there to stop it so we we got to get the walls up um yeah that's where we normally would have gone walking down that way and this is a little more direct route on the agenda for fixing over here is covering this area because once or twice there might have been a ghastly surprise. <laughs> no pun intended. Oh, bother. All right, I gotta remember that's that one all the way there. Uh, we ran into a problem where this guy here ended up uh, down that side, and I didn't know it was down that side. Nobody told me until I went all the way down the rail, bounced off it, and started heading back. And I really needed to hurry up and recharge stuff before uh, before we started streaming. So somewhere in this area, I'll probably push this out a little bit more and get a proper on-off station instead of a random chest and a block with a button on it. That's the idea. Um, that probably might happen over the long weekend. Because uh, th this Thursday is a holiday and I also took the following Friday off. Although, I might not do anything. I don't know. I haven't gotten that far in figuring out what's what. Not too much is going on down this way, but you'll notice I did a little remodeling in here, moved some stuff around. I uh, wanted to work on some banners, so I've got a loom set up now. I got a little barrel that I'm gonna put uh, patterns and dies. I'm gonna move the dies out of here and into that barrel above the loom because honestly I'm using dies more for the banners than anything else I've done so far and throw in a few more profession blocks so that way I could work on you know, repairing tools with the grindstone uh, starting to work on some maps with the cartography table and just figuring out some of the crafting recipes too I've also added a head 
All right. Now, let's head over to the rail station. We'll start at the main hub and take a look at what's going on there. You'll notice that Reyes has been working on the walls and building up a station proper. And shulker boxes galore. We're gonna have some signs up this way. Nice little proper station feel. And we've got some railway set up. You can tell by the blue lines that we've got uh, most of the main railway squared away. So here you are here. <laughs> Over in the main station, I'm almost tempted to uh, clone all the maps and then just update one of these at each of the stations. That, yeah, that, that, might, that might be in the near future. We need an on-off station over at Reyest's uh, demonic thing of doom. And um, that will happen once she finishes the tower it's going to be housed upon. And let's take a trip around the loop behind my base and over at Arcadius's base and then back in this way. And this is where Lights on, that means we got carts over at the station. Step on the pressure plate. There's our cart, and it will not leave till we get off the pressure plate. Um, my problem is that I have a bad habit of walking on top of this slab, uh, which is why I am now standing on this far corner here. So we get on there. There we go. To my base. To Arcadius. To Rayest, who doesn't have a loop back around. So we're going to go... Uh, let's go this way back to my base here. We Oh, of course it's going to be nighttime. <laughs> uh, that might not be that bad. So I've had a few raids to contend with, in case you couldn't tell by the back of my barn. I'm going to work on this project over here soon so the waterfall will fit into the landscape a little bit better. Look at that beautiful lake. Thank you, Arcadius. And here we come to the station. I've got a proper on-off over there and a lamp, and I just need to build the building. Let's, uh, that way is going to go off to another project that if I feel like trying to fly, although... Eh, Connection's looking a little bit better. I'm, I might I might try that. We'll see. All right. But that's going to another project to be uh, to be worked on soon-ish. Soon-ish. That's a time frame. <laughs> and then this way, Arcadius and I are talking about finding a different place for that ice farm so it's not looming over the rail like this. I ne definitely need to do a little cleanup on that side of the mountain. That's part of today's project. And, uh, you know, reshaping that landscape over there a little bit more. And nice thing is, is on this rail line, you get a chance to see some of the handiwork that Arcadius has done with his little uh, dog fight in the sky. Even get a little bit better view of his build over here. And we go down into the hill in this station here. It is not yet completely mob safe. They, they have a tendency to wander in from up there. So, uh, do mind your step. You might get jumped by a skeleton. That could have possibly happened while I was testing <laughs> testing out the rail station. Um, we got an on-off station over there. Just needs to be decorated. And that's going to a project to be determined. So, that will be used eventually, but not right now. So, let's head back to the hub. Where you get a nice look again at the dogfight, you get a look at our logo build, and a little lagtastic trip down the, the community center. That iron farm is going to get revamped now that we're on 1.14.3.3, right? Um, yes, dot three. And now we can get some solid iron farm designs working. All right, and let's get off this pony ride. There we go. And just your basic cactus into a hopper, or yeah, into a hopper, into the dispenser. They're started off at nine, re nine mine carts at each station. We shall see how long it stays that way. Hence why I installed the lights. I got through installing all the on-off stations, loaded them up with nine carts apiece, 
and then realized that um, it might be overly optimistic to uh, to think that they were all going to end up in one place. So, uh, yeah, there's our clue. And so we got the rail, we got the stations updated, and oh, uh, we put together a few different data packs, or we gathered a few different data packs. I've got the links on the CoffeeCraft website. I know I mentioned them. The stream we did after the 1.14 update, one of the data packs is the uh, customizable armor stands. And so if we lose a book, we just walk up to that little floating text particle thingy over there and it will give us another book so we can start playing with the customizable armor stands uh, we might get into that a little bit more once we get some more progress on the castle i've got a ton of guardian heads and i want to put them as defenders on the wall i've also got a ton of leather armor from the uh, zombie farm and getting zombie flesh to trade with the cleric so i could have the redstone to build that because trading with the cleric is a lot <laughs> a lot easier than digging. So I think that covers all the updates. We did the sugarcane farm over at Arcadius's place over at the Guardian farm. We got the rail. Yeah, there's still a little bit more work to be done at the rail. Each of the stations needs to be built in and enclosed. And we're going to do pillars uh, to hide some of the redstone blocks and give it a little more uh, a little more feel like it's a, a supported thing. And you can see that Rayest has already started work on that particular endeavor. So we're going to go with something similar to that with some chiseled, chiseled quartz and lanterns. That is why last week Arcadius and I went and did an hour-long hunt in in the nether for some quartz. Sorry. No. Throat's a little dry. Alright, so. That gets all that squared away. Now on to today's project. Oh, that is not what I meant to do. Okay. And... I don't know if this is going out to Twitch or not. I'm getting all sorts of fun over there. I know the local recording will be good, so uh, <laughs> if you didn't see this on Twitch, it should appear on YouTube. Because life. Yeah, now, now on my preview, I'm seeing stuff from a while back. Good to know. Okay. So, the idea is going to be to build at... We ended up... Alright. Let me try this again words. I sometimes use them. When we built this stairway up to the top of the mountain, we ended up having to push the stairway out a little bit more than the original mountain incline because it was just too steep to do the style of stairs I wanted. I could have used the regular stair blocks, but that, did, that felt a little too steep and didn't quite fit in with the stairs that we already had over there. So I pushed the mountain out a little bit and now I need to build it up again so it looks more like a natural mountain face. And we've been kind of, as time allows, coming out here, throwing down some brick and dirt and filling it out. Um, I am filling out everything behind there because I do not like making hollow builds. That is how you end up with all sorts of fun stuff. Especially when a creeper blows a hole in it and then unleashes every mob that ever spawned in there. Not, not that that's ever happened to me. Um, <clears throat> I'm not traumatized by it. Sorry. Couldn't help it. All right. Let's grab some stone. Let's grab some grass. And we're going to go through and do some building. I know, not the uh, most exciting stream that we could possibly be doing, but it is one of the things that needs to happen. And it gives me a chance to kind of talk out loud about a few things. Um, well, if I can multitask. Multitasking is not exactly my strong suit. Alright, so... Let 
Let's see if we can get up here real quick. I know that's going to come out a little bit more. I want a steeper mountain. I'm really trying to keep from extending this too far out beyond maybe that line there if I absolutely have to. Because I do still have to wrap this around the corner so it joins into the main mountain. But my earlier attempt here ended up just a tad too steep. And so if I went down two more dirt blocks and then came out. Okay, this could, this could work. That's still kind of steep, but I'm also not expecting to run up this mountain. And it's okay if some parts of it look a little bit steeper than others. Yeah, now I just need to come out. Ooh, that was a little bit too far. So we'll go up. We'll get two more there. And then we'll go... Another two... Alright, so that's going to be the general bend of this one. We'll worry about wrapping it around this corner here. Uh, second, I'm going to get this general shape to try to match up with what I got over there in the corner. And try to taper it up as we go. So taking a, a page from the 3D printing people. Because um, my earlier technique really wasn't working out too well. Uh, Taking a page from the 3D printer people, I'm going to get a rib there, a rib over here, and maybe one more over here. Start connecting it across and then start filling it in. Um, and I definitely want to get at least this side finished today. And if I can, start working on wrapping this around that sharp corner there so it's a little bit smoother and then join it into the mountain somewhere around here-ish. Um, it should kind of blend in since this this dirt here is part of the natural terrain that should be where it goes in. And I might come back through and re-terrain some of this later. Um, Actually, no, I'm definitely going to retrain a lot of this later. Where I would like to go with this is I would like to actually have a um, elevation point, like real mountains, where it's mostly rock above it. So figure out somewhere, somewhere on this mountain where that point and above is all rock, with maybe a little dirt block here and there. And then... Um, do dirt and grass the rest of the way down, do some like uh, light vegetation near the top of that and let the vegetation get a little bit thicker as you go down. And based off of that little bit of playing with stone slabs and stairs, I'm tempted to make that part where that where those that stonework starts, make that where it begins stone on up. Maybe have that line waver up and down a little bit because most most mountains it's not a hard straight line. Um, although I am going to make a hard straight line for the nearest bed. Safety first. Wouldn't be the first time I've awoken to a pillager standing outside the gate. That was uh, that was not a fun moment. We met. We discussed things. <laughs> So that's the plan. At some point after that work gets done, because I, I want to prioritize that since the rail runs by, I want to make sure that uh, the mountainside looks a little, a little prettier. I want to replace all these fire pits next. I kind of, I wanted some sort of stone fire pit type deal. Uh, making its way around and that was an okay start I might try it again with the actual stone blocks or maybe the polished anderson stairs now that that's an option 
or I may just go with this deal here with the magma block for color when you can see around the edges of the fireplace and use the uh, fireplace. The smoke will help because um, one of my goals is to get rid of that giant spruce pole which uh, was designed to help me figure out where my base was. I, I was wandering off into the woods and going to the wrong mountain because it wasn't there was no castle up there so it wasn't clearly uh, it wasn't clearly anywhere so that giant pole was my signal that oh yeah there be my home and uh, I want to replace that with a lava fountain because I can <laughs> alright let's get down here and get to this thing ow is my electric gonna deploy Nope. Nope, 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 nope. All the nope. <sighs> okay. That is pretty steep. That can work. So let's say we come up this way a little bit. Come on. Up the pillar. Up the pillar. And that might actually be a little bit higher than that, and that's okay. We're gonna, yeah, we'll still be one out. We'll go here. We'll drop down maybe two. Yeah. And we'll go. More. Yeah. I do like that now you can reach a little bit lower down now when you crouch. And I, I want to make sure that this is not completely in line with that so we get a little more. Uh, ups and downs as we go across as well. Um, oh, I'm running out of uh, under there to grab hold of. Okay. We should be close enough that we can reach here anyway. Two. Yeah, we'll go three here. start working it into this grass work that's already here. Then maybe go Ooh, that's probably gonna be too close. Yeah, that's likely to be too close. Ooh. And lag jumps, lag jumps. We got some new neighbors and all of a sudden we get a bunch of lag. I I, I sense a connection. <laughs> so that is one of the things that I definitely need to do. I need to contact uh, our internet service provider, beg them for more bandwidth, and ask them, please, please don't try to pitch me on anything else. I just want bandwidth. Nothing else, just the bandwidth. Please, please, please. Let's have the phone conversation just about what I want. Because they're usually trying to upsell. Oh, would you also like telephone service? No, if I wanted that, I would have bought it already. And what about, no, if I wanted that, I would have bought it already. And I get it. They're doing their job. That is one of the things they have to do, but it would be kind of nice to... Uh, be able to give no as an answer. Alright. I mean, they wonder why the post office has better customer satisfaction scores than they do. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. 
All right. Uh, sure. We'll try that. The benefit of not building hollow things is it's a whole lot easier to dig and re-landscape as you go. Because if all you have is the outer shell and you really want to move something down or up, it get well, up is easy. Down is hard. But uh, if you've got a solid filled-in area, that makes it a whole lot easier. Alright. Let's eat something. Let's definitely fill up the inventory with as much stone as we can. Oh, no more stone in there. Alright. Just get that off the hot bar for now. I don't know why I did that. Okay. And let's start filling that up. I mean, I could do my best Bob Ross impersonation. We got a happy little mountain. And another happy little mountain. <laughs> no wrong place blocks. Just happy accidents. <laughs> I remember... I remember my grandmother had gotten into painting and would actually watch... Bob Ross and a couple others. Cause she tried to uh, she tried to keep active all throughout her retirement. It's probably part of the reason why she lived as long as she did. And even in the end, she would devour books and books and books. Unfortunately, her memory kind of. Had a few uh, rough spots here and there, and uh, my uncle, God bless him. Um, well, she finished a box full of books and goes, "Would you take these down to the used bookstore and get me some more?" Sure. He left it there. I thought you were gonna get me some more books. I did. They're right there. Oh, okay. You know, some of these books. Seem kind of familiar. Yeah, you know, all all books of a genre kind of bear resemblance to each other. <laughs> Our family, sarcastic to the end. All right. One of the things that I've got to work on now is what's next. Those of you who have looked at my blog and read my blog, and I know there's at least a couple of you because I look at the traffic statistics, um, will know that I am currently on sabbatical from burnout. And while I am doing better in the relative sense, I am not better in the absolute sense. But I am at a point where I really got to start giving a hard look at what's next. I want to do more with game streaming. So I've been doing three streams a week on Twitch and Mixer. I do Coffee Craft, what we're doing right here on Tuesdays. On Thursdays, I've been doing Games Revisited, where I take a look at some classic games. And on Fridays, I do World of Tanks as a part of the 47%. And, uh... Oh. And that's been going okay. I mean, I, I get that as a new channel, you really ought not be staring at the numbers. Yeah, like the three friends that watch you live. Out of pity. Um, <laughs> I really should be building this across. Okay. So I gotta start figuring out what, uh, what I need to do. So I, I've got a Streamlabs page that is nearly finished. It will go live at live.anonjunior.com probably by the end of the long weekend. That is on my agenda. I've got to get uh, some of the stuff set up to accept donations. Uh, 
and I've got to finish my Patreon page. Uh, I started that a long while ago, and uh, never quite finished. Alright, this seems very dangerous, so I'm going to sleep on a bed on a s under rock ledge. We'll see how that goes. Okay, good. And uh, I've got to finish putting the Patreon page together. Part of the problem is, is I don't... Did that fall all the way down there? Where, where... Oh... Seriously? That is not cool. Let me go down there just to check. Arcadius was working on a project earlier, said so that he broke some emerald and it disappeared. And now my black shulker box of my black backpack appears to have disappeared. Oh, that, mm, that stinks. That, that's everything that was in that backpack, gone. That's uh, a backup set of tools. That's a bunch of building blocks. That's a bunch of arrows and potions. And yeah, that's a lot of sadness. That's a lot of... That completely derailed everything. Yep, nope. And it hasn't miraculously just appeared back in my inventory again. Hmm. just sucks. Alright. No rage quits this time. I, I already did my one rage quit per week. Last week. <laughs> I was doing Games Revisited and, <laughs> and, and Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is an awesome game. It is also from 2003. Uh, <laughs> so some of, the, some of the components do not play well with modern anything. And <laughs> The, uh, the, after updating to, uh, Windows 1904, um, or I think they actually called it 1903. They didn't release it until 05 either way, but, uh, the, the 19 being the year, the 05, 04, 03 being the month, um, <laughs> it, it's been messing with audio, it, the, ever since the update, um, whenever Knights of the Old Republic switches from the game to the cinematic it, it just it, it well that was weird okay uh, I get a funny feeling I'm going to be saying that a lot in the next hour um, it absolutely just craps out the picture and so I was trying <laughs> I was trying to fly away and I kept getting killed because it wouldn't switch to the uh, it wouldn't switch the game in time like I don't mind getting I, I don't mind getting killed I don't mind dying multiple times on the stream uh, that that ship has already sailed if you look back at the earlier episodes you'll see that in the arena fights I might have tried a couple of them under equipped and we all know how well un under equipped fights go. <laughs> Not too well. So. Huh. Yeah. That backpack is gone. Alright. Um, sorry, that, that is really distracting me. Can't you tell? I can't finish a single thought. Which is part of my concern for all this, because I was talking about the streaming, and, uh, anyway. I have no idea where I was going with that now. Bad days. Um. If you follow the Hermitcraft folk, they did a live stream weekend this past Sunday. And a bunch of the different Hermits did their, their respective streams and things. 
And what particularly has been on my mind of late is Rendog shared a little bit of his history and a little surprised by some of it. Uh, some of it he's shared in previous streams. Um, all right, so that's gonna go there. Go to there. Just sounds bad. Cause it the what? Oh yeah. Okay, those don't seem to be taking damage, so that's all that matters, right? Alright, um let's get another line of rock going here. And we'll go one, two, put one one more up there. Yeah, one more up there. Three, sure. <laughs> okay. Two. We'll leave space for that to come up one more, because basically I'm going to keep covering up the stone, and I want this to be a dirt hillside. Just start working this out in layers. At least I got a general template to follow down there, which will help, except I might have built this side up just a little too high. Find out in a minute. Alright, so if I go down like that, I don't know, that's starting to look a little too regular. Yeah, we'll throw one of those in there. And it's not like I'm not going to come back through here later and uh, do some serious, serious terraforming. Ooh. That was not the intent, but it works. Yeah, because that's going to go... Yeah, we'll drop that one there. That could work. Across this way. And maybe, just maybe, finish a thought. Why should I do that? That's right, I did want to waver this in and out a little bit more, too. Alright, I'll figure that out in a minute. Let me get the main of this. Times a scar because he makes this stuff look easy. Yeah, that might be a little bit too high on that side. stone. We got more shulker boxes than we know what to do with, but <laughs> which is funny because usually in uh, previous worlds we have more cobblestone than we know what to do with and I'm having to track it down every little while just to figure out <laughs> what's going on. Um, Alright, uh, 
instead of going the way I've been going, let me start by connecting this line to this one and start building out that way. See if that doesn't help out a little bit more. And let's just go ahead and put this here. And there's my backpack back. Just randomly reappeared. Alright, I'm not complaining. I, I got all my stuff back. That works. <laughs> I'll just... I'll just... I'll leave you right there. <laughs> Looks an awful lot like night. There we go. And... Twitch and Mixer are giving me warnings again. Hmm. I'm sure it is some executive's great mystery why the post office has better customer service. And I mentioned that a minute ago, but I, I bring it up again. Um, I, I, I get that from a couple of the... I get information like that from a couple of the podcasts I listen to. I get the work I'm doing right now to keep busy. Uh, gives me a lot of time to listen to podcasts. So I've, uh, I've definitely shuffled and restructured. And struggling again with talking and placing blocks at the same time. It's almost like chewing gum and walking. It's a wonder I get to work. Driving a stick shift. Although... With lost and confused driving, it, I blend in with the rest of the city just fine. <laughs> I can see Arcadius on the other side of the modern nodding vigorously. The uh, traffic around here is a lot, a lot worse than you would have thought. All right, getting there. Yeah. Uh, I'll, yeah, this is definitely going to be a process. Let me build out the hill and get kind of a rough sketch. Then I'm going to probably go through and do, yeah, and then do a second round of roughing. And then for the next round, I'm going to try, try to take it up where I add in some coarse dirt and some podzol and various other bits and bobs and and other things, I'm probably going to put a veritable forest of uh, sweetberry bushes on this thing because the carrot potato farm in there counts as a village. <laughs> I found that out because I was working on this little bit over here and one of those dudes with the banner had spawned and was walking his happy way down the stairs to say hello. And I killed him, not thinking that by being here... I am in range of that village over there. Village. That village over there. And, uh, yeah, it triggered a raid. And I nearly killed all the people in the raid, and this was before we upgraded to 1.14.3, so naturally, we got stuck in a raid loop. Because <laughs> in one of the waves that would come in would be one of the dudes with the banner. And I'd hit him and get Bad Omen and start another raid. It took me about three three raid cycles through before I realized what was going on. Uh, grabbed some flint and steel so that way I could burn the dude with the flag. <laughs> and uh, that doesn't count as a player kill. Sorry, I, I keep catching a little bit of green outside the corner of my vision thinking it's a creeper. Hiding just outside of my field of view. And uh, yeah, so that, that's part of where that veritable forest of banners over there came from. A fun little raid loop. I don't know. 
Yeah, we'll try that. We'll see how that works. That's starting to look a little too flat and regular for me, but we'll give it a try. Not like I can't dig it out when I go through for the second pass. Alright, not like I'm not going to go dig it out when I go through on the second pass. I'd ask for questions, but it looks like I disconnected from Twitch again. Alright, well, I'm going to keep going because I am recording locally, so if nothing else, I can post the uh, stream to YouTube. But I appear to continually get uh, dropped from Twitch because bandwidth. Because Comcast. Because Comcast hates us all. Drop it two there. I'll go only one there. I'll go three there. That would make it a two drop and a one drop, and that should blend in there a little bit better. further than I originally planned, but that, that'll be okay. Alright, so that's where that's going to match up. I'll have to put one more there, because I don't want any stone visible at this level, I don't think. I'll probably go through and change that. I try to fly to take a look, but you saw how flying's been working out today, so uh, <laughs> that's going to be a hard pass on the flyby. All right, that's not too bad. That's good in there. That terrain up in that corner there is mostly as it was when the world when the world generated. Um, I've been saying this for weeks now. Hopefully, over the long weekend, I'll make it happen. I do plan on doing a recording and going through previous servers I've still got the initial backup from when we first created this so I'll uh, I'll load up the brand spanking new empty map where we spawned and show you a little bit of before and after with as far as we've gone on season zero we started this map with the release of 1.13 and have been slowly going from there. Been a wild ride. Yeah, we'll put that there. Go two. Yeah. Drop that in there. Drop that in there. Sure. Let's try going. <laughs> That's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted.
Yeah, I'll come back through and reshape some of that a little bit more as we go, but that's that's coming together. I don't want a clear and easy path across the way. I mean, I guess if you really wanted to, you could parkour your way up this side, but I mean, why would you when there's stairs right there? All right. Ooh. I didn't notice that it's starting to look a little ratified like that. Yeah, I'll come through and fix that on the second pass through. I might also throw a little cobblestone in there for the uh, pebbles kind of effect. Is it actually nighttime or is it only looking like nighttime? You can only sleep at night and during thunderstorms. Um. Arcadius? Why are you down to four hearts of health? <laughs> You're not starving to death over there, are you? Do I need to drop you off a steak? Some cooked chicken? A fine cake? I can go for a cake. <laughs> it would be... It would not definitely be off diet. Definitely not what I need. Definitely what I want. <laughs> need and want are two very different things. Alright. Let's start working this one out by layers now too. careful not as far to go up here some dirt on top of that. to get rid of a bunch of the snow too but <laughs> I'm not sure I want to use that much string either let's back that back one and let's go oh let's go down two down two from there. That's down one more. Alright.
without dying. Eh, just good in there. Who knows? We might through, tear through a bunch of that extra stone. Although Arcadius has a bunch of... <laughs> I don't know if he got all that back to the community storage or not, but uh, I know he had a couple of huge boxes full. And he might still have some more from that dig that he's been working on. I will not show that off here. That will be one of those things that you'll have to see when you join his game. Ooh, Rast is going to join us. Let me, uh... Safe. Safe enough. Let me go fire up Discord so she wants to chat along with us. Oh. Well, hello. Hold on, I'm not on Discord yet. Yes, you are. You just replied on Discord. Oh, I didn't realize I left it up. Oops. Yep. <laughs> Although I'm going to have to pull your volume back a little bit. My bad. Okay. We'll try that. Are we having fun yet? What are you working on? I am working on some landscaping. Where at? Over at my base. When you have a second, can I borrow mm -hmm. both of you at the hub? At which hub? At the nether hub or at the train hub? The train hub. I don't go to the Nene hub. Sure you do. That's how you get to the uh, angry fish farm. The one that I don't go to? That might be fair. Yeah, I'll drop that there for now. Alright. I'd fly, but we've seen how that's been working out. You know what you could take? Yeah, there's no train station at the front of the base. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, hello. Okay. <laughs> hello, hello. So, I decided what I'm going to do with the roof. Okay. How much quartz is this Have you noticed in these boxes yet? No, it's not. Are you going to make an aquarium roof? I am. Okay, then. Oh, holy mother of fish. I gathered all the fishies. Are there puffer fish in there, too? No? There are. I haven't decided if they're going in or not yet, but I have them just in case. Okay. Okay, so the question is, I know the outside is going to look like this, and that's going to be the support. Like, you can see the beginning of the glasswork here. Okay. And the reason there is sand up there is to allow me to grow some um, sea stuff, seaweed and stuff like that, but in uh, strategic you places. Can, you can grow the seaweed on any block underwater. <coughs> the kelp... I think has to be on the grass or something. I'd have to double check that one though. Okay, well that's me marking out whatever I'm going to put there so that we can have some strategic places where we have um, not seaweed, I actually meant kelp. The thing that grows really tall. Oh, you, no, you should put the seagrass in there too. Not a lot, but a little okay. bit here and there. All you got to do is throw some bone meal down once there's water. Oh, cool. Okay. So the question is, for the interior, do we want to go with more of this prismarine brick uh, stairs? Or do we want to do quartz on the interior of here? And same for this part, which is going to hold up the roof. Do we want it to be um, the prismarine or the quartz? I can't help but notice that you uh, suddenly discovered dark prismarine. It's pretty.
I am tempted. <laughs> <laughs> Pointedly threatened. I, I, I'm tempted to say leave the uh, booth stairs as the prismarine brick. And as much as I don't want to encourage the use of quartz, put quartz around the outer edge. Okay, so this is coming down. I, I see another another hunt in my future. I'm glad you're observant. And this is coming down, right? <coughs> yeah, um... Yeah. Cool. And then finishing out as so and so and so. Make it so. Okay. And then I need glass. Like bricks. Like a lot of it. <laughs> okay. Uh, did we not already have a bunch of glass? In oh, those. Uh, we got the panes. Um, yeah, it looks like somebody converted a bunch of it into panes that we didn't need to. But we don't know that yet. I'm not done. Okay, that looks an awful lot like nighttime. So what do you think? Yeah, let's try it. That's a lot of fishies. That's a lot of fishies. Uh, <laughs> I was already contemplating asking the uh, hosting company to up our memory allotment by a gig, just in case that was part of the problem, too. Oh, okay. <coughs> but those so, fish um... might, <laughs> might just take care. <laughs> no, it should be all right. The fish are going to be awesome, though, and... I'm uh, about to go on an out-of-town trip with a friend later next month, and one of the things we want to do is go to this awesome aquarium that's in the town where you, like, walk, like, through tunnels of glass that are under the sea of sharks and fishies and things. Nice. So I'm going to make one. You know, I wonder how hard it would be to make that happen. Name tag a uh, dolphin or two and get a dolphin or two into the aquarium up there. We can do that. I, I mean, no. No such thing as an option. Make it so. <laughs> okay. Make it so. You're in charge of decoration. Oh, I can totally decorate the inside. Just get me the dolphins. <laughs> uh huh. All right, I think I'm making a waterway. I need some fishy friends. Are you going to do the aquarium <laughs> turtle relocation? <laughs> <gasps> turtles! We could have turtles. Wait, don't they drown if you put them underwater? They'll need a beach. I don't think they drown. They need a beach anyway. Okay, so it'll have to have a beach too. Back, back to the original, or the question I was getting ready to start, and that is... Um, are you doing the aquarium just to the edge of the booth, or are you going to cover the entire station with aquarium? Oh, the entire station. See the glass that's already started over there? And then it's going to cross, mm -hmm. so when you're in here, you can look up and see fishy. Okay. Uh... All right, let me... It's going to be awesome. Let me see what I have for glass, and then uh, I might be going to a desert a little later this And then week. we can come in here, and we can look at the glass and yell, FISHY! Just like Finding Nemo. <laughs> I just keep swimming. Although I do feel like Nori, or Dory, or whichever one's the one with the memory problems. I can't remember. <laughs> that would be Dory. It, it's not the Hobbit. There is no Ori or Nori or Bimboffer or, or whoever. And... <laughs> exactly. 
Uh, that's not a lot of glass. All right. Um, I think I'm about to go. All right. Yeah. I am going to go find a desert somewhere to absolutely tear down and destroy. Um, There's one behind my house that needs to go yeah, away. Yeah, but that, that's kind of close by. I was really hoping to absolutely ruin the landscape of something that wasn't right in our backyard. Well, it's not ruining the landscape. landscape. I need the surrounding area by my house to not be as tall as my pyramid. Yeah, yeah, there's red sand at the spider farm, too. Um, although I've also farmed a fair amount of that for other projects. Also, does anyone have any books of mending? Um, that's a good question. I know one of the villagers does. I don't think he's locked out yet. Actually, no, two of them do. And I'm pretty sure neither one is locked out yet. Because I have a diamond shovel, and it's about to die, and it doesn't have mending. But I gave you a full set of shovels with mending. Oh, yeah, I'm saving those. Why? <laughs> They're there to be used. What if I need them? If if, if I use it them now, It sounds like you need them now. <laughs> <laughs> Like, here I am getting ready to hunt down mending books because I thought you lost or broke those. Like, go, go, no, go use them. They're safely That's what in they're my there box. for. No, uh, use them. I like saving things. Just, just don't be like Arcadius and mind the uh, damage bar. Yeah, he's bad about that. Well, now you get me curious if I do actually have a mending book floating around here somewhere. I try. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. You need a uh, silk touch for a shovel, too, don't you? How much is that silk touch worth? Okay, so do for what I'm about to do, do I want the one with fortune or the one with silk touch for the um, sand? Uh, it's not going to matter either way for the sand. Okay. Ailing loyalty, look at the sea, power. Ooh. Oh. That's a tough one. Alright. Early on, Arcadius and I may have used the fish farm a few times to, you know, level our way up a little bit more rapidly. Which means I have this wonderful book that has Sharpness 3, Sweeping Edge 3, and Silk Touch. Let me see if I can find a better one to sacrifice. Although, I've got like three or four swords already decked out. So, you know, I, I guess I can't really, you know, yell at Rayest about holding on to stuff and not using them if I'm going to sit here with this book. Uh-huh, see? <clears throat> Just saying. I might also have to gather up some levels and combine a few of those. Actually, find the ones that I definitely don't want and strip them for the XP now that we got the grindstones. Yeah, like that sounds like a much better plan. Like... Knockback? Not never gonna use it. I tried that on my first sword. Yeah, you know, before I got sarcasm, I had wit, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the the knockback was really yeah bane of arthropods one. No point in keeping that. Ooh, there's a silk touch all by its lonesome. Oh, I already had one. Okay, no, what was I looking for? Mending, mending. Why, why am I pulling all the Silk Touch books? I just needed the one. Uh, hey, Arcadius. I don't think he's on voice. He's just, uh, or he's listening, but... Uh, where 
Yes, power, bane, protection, power. Da, 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 da. Ooh, I gotta remember that fortune is there. <coughs> Wait, did... Dynamite? What? <laughs> what? Why, are, why are you asking about dynamite? Because doesn't this one, when we blow stuff up, it doesn't go away? Um, yes, with an asterisk. If you blow it up while there are entities sitting on the ground, those will get destroyed. But as far as the things that get blown up, um, yes, it will drop. Everything that drops is everything that got blown up. If that makes sense. Well, I'm not going to release it all at once. This is right near my tower. <coughs> there we go. Mending. I did have a mending book floating in there. Oh, yeah. Uh, one of these days, I'm going to have to go through and organize all that. Today is not that day. How is there a random creeper near me? Where did he come from? <laughs> the desert? I don't know. Uh, there are a couple of caves over in the desert, if that's where you're meandering. Oh, I'm digging, not meandering. Eh, yeah, potato, potato. Alright, Arcadius, you wanted the Silk Touch book? Arcadius, you wanted the Silk Touch book. You can nod over the monitor, I can see you. <laughs> Alright, and Reyes needed the mending book. And I need to find a place to nap. Nighttime is coming. Is it as anticlimactic as winter was? <laughs> yeah. Well, it depends on who you ask. Some people enjoyed it. I don't know who those people are, but some people enjoyed it. There's a fly flying across, and I thought it was somebody flying way off in the distance. Oh. <laughs> That's awesome. I got rockets again. Again? Uh, I ran out. Ah. Yeah, I guess we need How to does one make dynamite? Farm too. You need gunpowder and sand. Oh, well, that seems very not logical to use sand to blow up sand to get sand. <laughs> yeah, that, that, uh, that would be the general idea. You get a mending book in your, uh, mailbox. Oh, thank right. you. You know what? It's probably worth attaching to the shovel, is it not? Before it breaks? Oh. Again, you've already, you might as well on that one, but uh, oh, sorry. I grabbed the other I'm one. Trying to fly. Just in case this one broke, I grabbed the other one. All right. So, how many stacks of glass do we want to guess we need for this project? Eight billion and two. All right. That might not be as dramatic a guess as you think it is. I'm pretty sure it isn't. All right, so over this way, there's my castle in the sky. Uh, well, at least it seems like it from the distance. When we were first doing our exploring and I was heading out this way, I came across this desert temple over here. And I passed it to and fro as I would go to the village over this way or the villagers we were trading and two of whom we imported to uh, create our great and glorious farm. I think we still got a couple couple people in there in a protective and a safe place. Those holes in the ground with the torches on them. Um, <clears throat> they're protected. They're protected. Unethically so, but they are protected. I'm actually hoping they didn't despawn when we did some of the, when we did the uh, 1.14.2. No. 
Oh, 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 I got plenty of villager villagers. Remember, they're the ones that uncontrollably... Voltec, what? <laughs> anyway, um, <coughs> this desert, desert temple was one that I came across... Uh, looking for villagers early on. I've already lo I looted that joker long ago. But what I'm thinking about doing is taking the rail line from my base and setting up an offsite base over here and taking over this temple. Um, probably going to do a little redesign or redecorating. Base? Yeah, because my base needs a base. Um, started working on this a little bit Sunday so this is the normal place where you got the little pit trap with all the dynamite down at the bottom no there's no more dynamite down at the bottom uh, what I'm probably gonna do is maybe start putting rooms off of each each side I might make this an actual like floor and start putting a couple of three high floors at different landings I haven't quite decided that far yet, but uh, definitely going to take this joker over and make a uh, mansion at the beach. Cool. Can I use your furnace? Yes. Thank you. And uh, on the long-term plan, Arcadius and I are going to take that giant smelter of doom that Iskal... Uh, Posted it. Come on, fly. <sighs> That's Can a lot we of specifically right call there. it the Smelter of Doom? The Smelter of Doom. Yes. I feel like that's necessary now. Well, that's what he calls it. This is Escal. Everything is of Doom. So it can be the Escalian Doom Smelter? Sure. Wow, out of those three stacks of rockets, that's all that's left. <laughs> and now uh, you wonder why I'm always out of rockets? Well, it's not normally this bad. Normally it only takes one or two rockets to, uh, to take off. But basically what we're thinking of doing is maybe somewhere along this hillside here, build it into the hillside, and that way we can have that gigantic smelter for when you know somebody says I need all the glass <laughs> and and power it up with a couple of bamboo farms because yeah it's going to take a couple of bamboo farms to feed Not all that all the glass just a few hundred stacks yeah just a few hundred stacks oh That is that is part of the that, that is part of the plan, um, and the other thing we're gonna do is a dynamite-based tree farm somewhere out in the community center. I might move that off to the outer edge near where the swamp is. Just you know, noise ordinances, all that. Uh, we can call it Shrek's. Shrek's, Shrek's tree farm. Yeah, like Shrek's swamp. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but I haven't quite decided where the tree farm will go. A lot of that depends on which design we ultimately decide to go with. Um, but it's definitely going to be one of those TNT-based ones, and it needs to accept most, if not all, types of trees. Um, maybe we'll fill in this bit of river here and uh, build it back this way. Sorry, looking at the bacon. Bacon? Uh, yeah, the pig. Uh, that's well-preserved bacon. It'll stay fresh until you need it. That's I might move. I might move that somewhere out front now. That was a nice convenient place to have the little horse corral, but... um. The community center appears to have sprung up around it. So maybe I'll move that up front here somewhere. And... Oh, but it's cute! This old style... Well, now old style uh, iron farm. It's gonna have to come down. 
I've already removed the potatoes because right up until 1.14.3... Never mind, they're still tossing potatoes at each other. Seriously, guys. Yeah, they, they were tossing potatoes at each other, making love hearts, and, and getting mad because there's no beds. Um, I had to turn that all into regular dirt because that guy kept replanting and... Apparently somebody else replanted everything after I ripped up all the potatoes. <laughs> Remind me how one adds to all four smelters at once? The, you can drop them in the hoppers. Oh, okay. What? Right, but, um... These guys are going to get transported somewhere. What I might do is when I dig out a little bit of that area for the smelter, I'll just light it up, move these guys into that hole for the time being, and uh, also those guys up on the ceiling. And I'm going to rebuild this so instead of sitting in boats along the edge, they get proper trading booths and uh, build some booths up on that side and that side there as well and over there and up top where the iron farm used to be maybe put together uh, some carrot potato pumpkin and melon farms so that way there'll always be something at the trading hall to trade with the villagers or at least with the farmers have a uh, couple of farmers there ready to trade anything and everything for emeralds And, uh, probably redo the building design, too. Yeah, not probably. Going to redo the building design, too. <laughs> Alright, <coughs> so I got about a half hour left on the stream. Let me try to get a little bit more of this hillside taken care of. Actually, let me get a nap, and then I will get the rest of the <laughs> more of this hillside taken care of. Seriously. Come on, Minecraft. It is nighttime. Alright, that is still progress on the mountain, though. That, now that some of the grass has grown in, that is looking better. What I might do... It, now, you probably noticed the grass looks a little weird. That's because of the texture pack that I've loaded in. That changes the grass line from being up top there to down there. Makes it look a little bit neater. Um, I do have Optifine, and I've been tempted to do the connected textures, but... Uh, this is a fair compromise. Except for the... Will the connected textures make it where the glass looks like doesn't have lines? Yes. And I would now like that. <laughs> okay, we, we can make that happen. Because that seems suddenly exceedingly important. It can be. Before I forget about why I have all those potatoes in my inventory, let me put those away. Then I'll get back to this building. At least I've got a few potatoes. <laughs> oh, I didn't name that box. I'll have to remember to do that too. I'll leave a suggestion in the comments if you have some ideas for a funny potato name. Or name for a box of potatoes. Bonus points if you can work in a uh, World of Tanks joke since I play that too. Yeah, that's looking alright. I have jokes. You could call your potatoes hordes. 
Oh, no. No. Or Colonel. No, I'm not going to do that to them. Aw, oh, you're no fun. You don't troll your friends. Oh, I do troll my friends. Somebody should be very happy that I haven't uh, gotten around to building that giant chicken statue I was planning on building over at their base. How does one construct such a giant chicken statue? The internet. It has everything. That is fair. Yay, I have a shovel of mending. You, have, you already I had two shovels of mending. I have to use my mending. nice shovel of mending. <laughs> oh, no, those are my nice shovels of mending. <laughs> is this like having the, the dozens of pairs of shoes? You get the nice shovel amending for special occasions, and then the other shovel amending for when you're working. There's a look happening over here. Do you feel it? Oh, I, I, I'm quite familiar with that look. Okay. Of course it's like having multiple shoes. Why would you not have multiple shoes? You're asking the guy that has the one pair of boots? Yeah, super weird. I guess I should eat. Well, at least your health bar isn't down to, like, a heart. I mean, it gets that, that, that is way actually why though. I added that to the bar, so that way Arcadius and I could check in and now and again prompt somebody to, uh, you know, I might want to eat something. All right, it's time to repair my shovel. I have some angry men to talk to. <laughs> I thought you were nice to your staff at the last meeting. I was, they had so much fun at the last meeting. We talked about the merits of long-term decision makings and consequences and how to make multifaceted decisions and then played Carcassonne. It is a fun game. It was, and if you're trying to make an illustration about the merits of long and short-term decision making, it's a wonderful analogy that also does team building. Or team not building, depending on which one you're talking about, because one of them played a lot more my style than the others. Oh. Oh. That sucks. I'm so sorry, Arcadius. Let me guess. Incoming remark about, uh, to be out here digging sand in three, two, but you already did it for me. <laughs> and you're right, that wouldn't have happened if he was digging sand with me. <laughs> Almost like I knew. Yeah, okay. Some of these zombies are really angry. Let's go with that. Three, two. 
That may not work. listening to uh, Chord Killers at work today. For those of you on the stream who don't know, it is an excellent podcast about movies, TV, and everything in that general uh, discussion topic, area, genre, however you want to phrase it, that you could possibly be interested in. I highly recommend it. Um, they had Scott Wilkinson on it. And he used to do a couple of shows along the home home theater tech for uh, the Twit Network before the show ended up getting cut. Uh, there are feelings and opinions on this, but that's for another day. And uh, Brian was definitely in some kind of special mood. And let's just say, I really think Tom sighed a little more frequently than I've ever heard him sigh in an episode. There, there was an awful lot of... <sighs> I don't know why I thought about that, Rachel. Rest. I don't know who you're talking about. But while I let the zombie... Spawn load, I'll be right back. Thanks for the warning. Yeah. And Tom recently has a uh, patron only option put together a list of the podcasts and tech feeds and whatnot that he subscribes to. Um, it's a really good list. It is a patron only list though. So you do have to be a supporter of the daily tech news show podcast, uh, to, to get that episode. But, uh, once you do support, you do get access to the back episodes and, um, kind of had me thinking about revisiting my own list of podcasts like I do listen to DTNS I actually support at the level that I get good day internet uh, good day internet is the uh, the daily tech news show with the pre and post show um, fun shenanigans however you want to say it um, attached to the recording so you get them as they're warming up and as they're winding down from the from the episode and it is all sorts of fun. I also listen to Chord Killers. As I mentioned, I've got Troy Hunt's weekly update. Troy Hunt is an Australian security researcher. He does a lot of the tech security, IT security type stuff. Uh, he runs Have I Been Pwned and a couple other websites along those. He does the Hack Yourself First conference. If you want a really good sampling of his work, depending on how technically inclined you are, you can either check out the Internet Security Basics training that he did for Veronis, which is an excellent primer on good password security and account security and how to stay safe on this wild thing we call the web. And uh, if you're more technically inclined, you can catch the keynotes that he does for NDC, the uh, developers conference. I don't think his bit from the most recent one in Oslo is up yet, but it should be up soon. 
and is definitely, definitely entertaining. I believe he's brushed up and updated. I'm pwned, you're pwned, we're all pwned. <laughs> and, uh, the last time he did that, he went through a whole raft of different uh, internet-connected devices with all sorts of fun little vulnerabilities and things uh, to include a uh, bidet that is Wi-Fi enabled and hackable and somebody who's compromised the system can um, run the water <laughs> and can run, change the water temperature and activate all sorts of other features that the uh, device enables all without you knowing they they do have to be within wi-fi range so this is this is still something that has to happen generally nearby uh, there's the teapot that le leaks your password there's the um, wi-fi enabled uh, hmm. How to do this on a teen rated stream. Um, adult toys. That uh, leaks the videos that were intended for other people. Not other people as in the people who are watching them, but other people as in the people you intended. Um, mm, yeah. Think on that one for a little while. No, don't think on that one for a little while. What else was there? Oh, yeah, there was all sorts of ones. Oh, the wireless light bulbs that leaked your Wi-Fi credentials. So anybody within Bluetooth range of your house could figure out what the Wi-Fi password and all that was. And anyway, he goes through a lot of the, a lot of those different devices and things. And I believe this is supposed to be an updated version of that talk. Um. Ooh, and I have returned to the sounds of angry, angry men. <laughs> Feed my shovel. They did not feed it that much. No? Well, they, they don't give as much XP as the uh, Guardians do. Yeah, I don't play with the fishies. I play with the nice, happy fishies. Those are the only fishies I play with. You grab the puffer fish. I would argue that those are not happy fishies either. Yeah, those weren't like an intentional, ooh, let's grab puffer fish as much as it was, oh dear God, what's killing me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that, that's fair. That's fair. And I had a bucket in my hand and a bucket of water, and you know what? That resolved the solution. <laughs> <laughs> did, did that take care of the situation? It did. And I wasn't getting killed anymore, so that seemed like a good resolution at the time. <laughs> eh, this might be good enough for now. Let's see. I was going through my podcast list and kind of thinking about what I'm what I'm keeping, what's what might go, and just giving general recommendations to. What ones have you recommended? Uh, the Daily Tech News Show, or Good Day Internet, if you want to subscribe and get the pre and post show, which is often highly entertaining. Uh, Cord Killers, and I was just talking about Troy Hunt's weekly update. Um, kind of in that same vein, I do listen to Security Now with uh, Steve Gibson over on the Twit Network, This Week in Tech, in case you're not familiar with that. Um, it is one of the great granddaddies of podcasting networks. It's been around for a long time. And they've got a wide variety of shows. Um my selection from their catalog has narrowed over the last few years. Um, 
I love Steve Gibson. Uh, I love his insight on security topics. Um, the the show has kind of uh, blossomed into a much longer endeavor than it used to be. And so I'm not entirely sure if I can uh, continue listening. Just because of uh, time. Which is a shame. Because Security Now was actually the first podcast I ever subscribed to and listened to on the regular. It's how I found a lot of the podcasts that I listen to now. Um, so, there, there's that part of it. Plus, Steve is, like, smarter than the rest of the universe combined oh. or something. Like, holy cow. Oh, Steve, Steve is, uh, yeah, he, he is something very, very special and unique. And um, you can learn a lot from his show. I would recommend to anybody really interested in learning the nitty gritty of how the internet works to go look in the back catalog because he did a series where he <laughs> he, he went from the, the bare essentials of what a packet is and talked about, you know, internet and networking from from just shy of the literal ground up. I mean, he didn't quite go into the raw silicone, but uh, it's not far off from that. <laughs> like, this, these are the bits. These are bits and bytes. These are how bits and bytes make a packet. And, and just built up from there. It is a phenomenal educational bit. And he used to do a lot more of those shows when the security news was a little bit thinner. Um, in these interesting times we live in, there's usually more than enough actual security news to get into without necessarily having time to, uh, to do the in-depth tech dives like he used to. Um, although he's got a new secure, he calls it Squirrel, S-Q-R-L. It was originally secure QR login, but now it is supposed to be secure, quick, reliable login. Um, I, it's one of those things that I, I hope it take, like the optimist, optimist in me really hopes it takes off. The cynic in me suspects it might not, not because of any problem with the technology, but because of inertia in the way humans behave and act and are. Is that too cynical? That sounded really cynical. You're talking about someone who works retail. Yeah, I know. I know. That, that comes with its own cynicism. I can no longer underestimate the sadness <laughs> of humanity. Okay. I'll let your work that time. So, I am still listening to Security Now. I do recommend it if you're interested in that end of things. I am I may end up pruning it out of my list for time. Um, also a part of the... Twit Network is Windows Weekly. That is Paul Throt, Mary Jo Foley, and Leo Laporte. And as the name would imply, they talk primarily Microsoft and Microsoft stuff. Uh, Xbox and Office 365 and Windows and all, all the things Microsoft. Uh, Mary Jo actually writes at a blog all about Windows. No, sorry, all about Microsoft um, as a part of ZDNet. Who is surprisingly still around? Did you talk about the Aussie dude yet? I like him. Yeah, yeah, that's Troy. Um, I actually got one of the guys at the repair shop to listen to one of the lessons that he did on Internet Security Basics. That that cool. was fun. If, if he can, if he can get it, you can too. Um, He'll say the same thing. That that's not as mean as that sounds. He'll tell you the exact same no, thing. No, I I am thinking of someone I need to share that particular one with. Ah. Because it was someone at work who asked me about my VPNs. Oh yeah, yeah. 
and I didn't quite know where to begin. Yeah, he gets into password management, <laughs> password, you know, how to how to properly handle passwords in this fun day and age, how to, how to properly manage accounts, you know, using using a password manager like LastPass or KeyPass, uh, using a VPN, how to check and make sure that your connection to a website is secure, what the little padlock does mean, what it doesn't mean. Um, for example, a lot of people think that the little padlock you see on a website means that the website is trusted. That is not true. It just means that your connection is secure. You could be directly connected to the devil. And all it means is that your connection is secure. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like or you're thoroughly ensconced I mean, in um, the devil? <laughs> so it just means you have a secure connection. That, that's, that's literally all it means. Um, the myth that it meant that the site was trusted comes from the days when security certificates were so expensive only legitimate websites would buy them because it was one of those things that it was just it was too expensive if you were not a legitimate website the the um, cost to benefit ratio of buying a certificate just to run a fake spammy website well it, it was not working in your favor at all so by proxy of being too expensive to not be real it was sort of an indicator of the trust level you could have, if that makes sense. It does. And, uh, yeah. But now there's companies that, surprise, surprise, they, they make money selling those extended validation certificates and other certificates. And so there's a lot of misinformation out there right now. Kind of makes me sad for the profession. So we got. Yeah, I'm now, thinking about Weekly, some places. Hunt. Yeah, not not going there either. Because there are some businesses that kind of forget about the whole security certificate thing, which is a shame. Because if you're running internal corporate stuff. You can basically make your own internal certificate for free. Uh, the only reason why it gets to be a little interesting is because it is not immediately trusted by anybody. But since it is an internal certificate for internal things, you can add it to the security certificate store. Not stores in the place you go shopping, but stores in the place that you store things. Um, because, well, you own the company. You, you can put whatever you want there. And thus get secure internal connections for free. There's also websites out there now like Let's Encrypt, whose sole purpose in life is to provide cheap security certificates for people who can't afford them. Oof. That was the elytra not deploying. Um, <clears throat> and that's starting to build out a little bit further than I intended. Alright, that works. I got room. Um, yeah. So, you, you can go to Let's Encrypt and get a free security certificate for your website. So, uh, like... The CoffeeCraft website has an SSL certificate, but I'm using Cloudflare for not just the security certificates, but for uh, the uh, CDN, the Content Delivery Network. So that way we can run the, uh, the, the texture pack that we use on the server without getting a stupidly massive web hosting bill for every time it needs to <laughs> every time Minecraft decides that we need to download the uh, texture pack and so as long as the traffic stays fairly steady we uh, don't get hit too hard on the internet host and instead we end up using the, uh, the Cloudflare bandwidth we're using the free one which comes with some minor restrictions but nothing Nothing we can't live without or live within. 
Um, anyway, now we're drifting away from uh, podcasts again. Let's see, what else do I have in there? I've got First Ring Daily, which is a podcast that Paul Therott does with Brad Sams. Much like Windows Weekly, it is a Microsoft-centric blog post, or a Microsoft-centric uh, podcast. But it is, how shall I put it, uh, far more informal than Windows Weekly. And Brad and Paul get, um, yeah, they, they get very informal with the way they deliver the, uh, the news from Redmond. <laughs> Eat a steak. And one of the things that I like is that it does give you a decent decent glimpse of what's going on in Microsoft in a much shorter time than Windows Weekly. Um, Windows Weekly is not clear, not there yet, but the runtime on that podcast has also ballooned quite a bit from when I first started listening. It was literally the second podcast I started listening to. Um, and so again, that might, I'm still deciding on if it's going to stay or go. Which is a shame because I, I really do, I really do enjoy the interactions between Paul and Mary Jo, and I, I may, I may keep it just for that reason, even if it is a bit uh, long. They usually run about two hours an episode, sometimes more. staying on the tech side uh, or intersecting the tech side and some of the legal issues I listen to the Tech Dirt podcast I do that one a little bit more infrequently the the podcast can be a little hit or miss but the the main Tech Dirt website I, I read that daily that's part of my that's part of my everyday read I don't read every article they publish but uh, if you want a good a good read on the intersection between technology, copyright, and, and that end of things, free speech, uh, First Amendment type issues, Tech Dirt is definitely worth the read for that. And the podcast is usually pretty good too. It, it seems to depend a lot on who they got to guest that day. Uh, because Mike Manzik is a wonderful writer and an okay interviewer. He's not always able to uh, to bring out the best out of the people he's interviewing. Oop, glitchity glitch. Okay. Skewing a little bit further into the politics end, I have recently added Politics, Politics, Politics. Hosted by Justin R. Young, I will, I will say that that is probably not for the teens and definitely for the adults. I love Justin. Uh, I enjoy his take on a lot of stuff, but his his shows definitely skew towards the um, mature demographic. We'll go with that one. It, it is a little over the top at times, but he succeeds in his goal of not being a raging partisan fest or confirmation bias fest. He's described it both ways. And so it is a, a nice heads up on what's going on without having to go, okay, I know that they also support so can I buy into what they're saying on in that kind of thought process? Um, 
I have been listening to the Art of Manliness podcast as well. It is a wonderful companion to the Art of Manliness website. Brett McKay does some excellent interviews, like even even books where uh, I have zero interest in the subject matter. He he's one of those people that can bring the best out of the people he is interviewing. And uh, I missed that one. And who actually like reads the whole thing that he's yes. interviewing, not yes. the cliff notes. Yes, he very, very clearly has read the book when he's interviewing the people. Like you, you can tell by the questions he's asking and the author's reactions to the questions that he's asking. Um, it, it's very clear more than a few times that the author's kind of even through the microphone non-verbally said thank you for setting that up for me <laughs> oh. I, I heard you IRL but not over the mic ah okay um and that's covering most of the tech and legal stuff that I listen to. I do listen to the sermons that Lighthouse Baptist posts. That is the church I was at previously before we moved. Because <laughs> it's kind of hard to drive you know, three hours to, to services. Um, and I do listen to... Uh, Mark Gunger's sermons at a celebration church in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. It is wonderful, even if this is not your bag. It is approachable, as long as you're okay with uh, getting reminded that he is a Packers fan. So, if you're from you know, Michigan, be prepared for a few digs here and there. Although you should be used to it by now. Sorry. <laughs> I, I couldn't help that. What? I know somebody that else who's me. not a big fan of Michigan either. But for state level stuff. I, I can't imagine who you're talking about. <laughs> it wouldn't be the Go Buckeyes in uh, chat, would it? <laughs> Buckeyes? I thought your team was the Wolverines. Oh, oh, hang, hang on. Let, <laughs> let me, let me, let me take Jubba for a walk. Cause, uh, yeah, it's no longer safe to be in the house. Run away. Run away. <laughs> yes. Arcadius is a huge Ohio State fan. And that is the uh, that that is the full full list of all the podcasts that I listen to, uh, or I should say the full list of audio podcasts that I listen to. If you look on my YouTube channel, you'll see all the different channels I am subscribed to, and I try to catch most of them as they publish. I don't always manage it. Uh, there are some that I'm willing to kind of cut for time, so to speak. So you know, if I'm running, <laughs> if I'm running out of week in my week, I won't listen to Dave Ramsey only because I've listened to the audio podcast long enough that I can actually answer the questions before he does. I do still listen to the show from time to time because, as as human beings, we need to be reminded about as often as we need to be instructed, and so. It, it is one of those things that it, even if you even if you know what he's teaching, even if you know what's going on, you should definitely definitely listen. Because um, again, we there's one other that you should mention that's totally worth it, but it's not a podcast; it's a blog. Which other? Jenny Lawson. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody may have. Uh, bought Reyest for 
birthday or Christmas. I don't remember which Jenny Lawson's book. Let's pretend this never happened. That book was promptly devoured that day. (laughs) Which I think is absolutely wonderful. But, uh, you know, family readers. So nobody's offended by a book absolutely disappearing in a day. Um, Matter of fact, it is a relief. It is a relief to see a book disappear in a day. And I've read it many times since then, and it has been worth it every time. (laughs) So, yeah, definitely some funny stuff. And uh, after Let's Pretend This Never Happened was Furiously Happy. Also Mm -hmm. an absolutely wonderful book. Uh, A little more serious than Let's Pretend. But it gets into, into some other areas of life that definitely yeah if you're into audiobooks I highly recommend you go get the audiobooks because they are narrated by Jenny Lawson who is absolutely hilarious as a narrator um I've, I've started digging into the audiobooks because again I've got a lot of time to listen to stuff while I work and uh, so I've been doing more audiobooks than actual Kindle books or physical books. And uh, yeah, some authors I have found should write the books and leave the reading to, to people who read. Anybody else. Yeah, anybody else. Like, please just hand, hand the book over. Put, no, no, no. Put, put the book down. Hand it over. And... Uh, and, and some of them, some of them surprise me, um, because they're excellent speakers. But that's when they're speaking. When they're doing the audio book, they're very, very clearly reading to you. And there's a big difference between their normal public speaking and their reading. And you definitely feel uh, read to. Uh, but anyway, Jenny Lawson is not one of those authors. She is one of those ones that you definitely want to hear narrate her book. Now you got me thinking about that. I've picked up a few C.S. Lewis books here lately. Um, Audible has... C.S. Lewis, uh, one of his few recorded radio broadcasts of the Four Loves. Like a lot of C.S. Lewis's radio broadcasts are missing, or not missing, but you know we're we're talking World War One, World War Two, so it's not it's not like uh, it is as well preserved as many of our. It's lost in a reel, somebody's basement. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. And it is it is definitely definitely worth a listen to hear him give give what was essentially a speech. Uh, yeah, the, the the book itself may have been written down, but it is the the transcription of a speech. And to hear Professor Lewis, yeah, you definitely hear the Professor Lewis come out. Um, deliver the material it, it is uh, it's good it is definitely worth a listen uh, Ravi Zacharias is another one that that falls in that same boat where he he is one of those authors that you should hear read his book because he writes a lot like he speaks so you get the same effect as when he's doing his public speeches if if you can manage to parse the the rather thick Indian accent, although it's not okay, I shouldn't say rather thick. It's not that bad. It's not that his accent is that thick. It's the pacing. Like yeah. he kept part of the pacing of one of the languages he speaks 
and yeah and if you if you're not familiar with who he is he he is originally from india uh his family left india be, be <laughs> and moved to canada so you've got the fun of indian and french and english all kind of influencing an accent that was not what i meant to eat okay so it's not bad, it's just it can get distracting if you are distracted by such things. Yeah. Uh oh. Sounds like a certain puppy ate too fast. Which is kind of redundant, but you know. Well, he's a lab. Yeah, I know. But he's cute. He eats as fast as he can inhale. <laughs> yeah. Because, dear God, it will be another 12 hours before you feed him. That's a long time. Oh, oh, deploy, deploy. Oof. Now it deploys after I The land. plane, the plane? No, no, no. My elytra as I fall off the side of the cliff. It's okay. Oh. It's only half a heart. That's not good. I can repair my boots later. Yeah, that's actually coming up pretty good. I'm a little over my target time at 8 o'clock. Um, I'm going to try to finish up at least out to that edge there. Or 8.30, whichever comes first. Because I do, I do still have to <laughs> render the video start the upload to YouTube, which has become torturously slow in recent days. It, it's not quite, you know, Australian internet bad, but it's getting, it's getting kind of close. Uh, I've actually had the upload fail a couple of times because of how, how slow it was running. Let's do that there. Let's go. Think of what other books and podcasts and things. So I know a couple of the oh, ones. Books? Up, a couple of the podcasts I mentioned. They books or also, is the topic still audio? Uh, the po topic is mostly audio, but I I I definitely include audio books in that. Like if you're into the uh, the wizards and that sort of thing. And a good combination wizard detective type deal. Uh, the Dresden Files is narrated by the absolute awesome talent whose name fled the second I needed to say it. James. Is it Marsters or? Marsters, yeah. Yeah. Because there, there's a couple of similar names that have been bouncing about for various things, and my brain suddenly couldn't remember it's which Spike one It's Spike from which. Buffy. <laughs> Just everybody in love. It's Spike from Buffy. <laughs> oh, everybody from a certain generation or two. Shh. Everybody knows Spike from Buffy. <laughs> Don't you blaspheme. <laughs> no, blaspheme would be... <laughs> saying that they were getting ready to remake it which I hope they don't do because no why did you put that in the universe there are they're already remaking a bunch of other stuff that you would have thought they wouldn't have done but there they are there it is no <laughs> mm, okay at some point in time I'm gonna need you to come back and take a look at this because I feel like something doesn't look right uh oh okay let me uh, finish this layer of dirt. Well, no, not necessarily right now. We're not necessarily on cast. I oh. just want to, before I, like, really go to town on all glass work. I want to make sure that I have a solid on what I want to do with this and where I want it to go.
And the booth, ticket booth in the middle looks a little oh. off, but I'd already attended. And Twitch is bugging out on me again. Nope. And it's now that I twitchy. complained about it, it's back. No, just bandwidth issues. It's really starting to kind of... Err. Alright, so what's the question? Um, hold on, I have to put this back. Um, the booth in the middle. Now that all the inside is quartz, I think it looks moderately odd. And I don't know if maybe it's because I need to do something to intersperse. Like, maybe the top just looks weird, or... Um... I think it'll be okay. I, I honestly think it's the dark prismarine that's throwing it off. Mm, but it's pretty. Okay, I'll try some. Yeah, maybe use the dark prismarine as the pillars uh, around the map. Because the dark, because the regular prismarine matched the walls of the actual building, and so having that up there as a regular prismarine would have uh, been a nice prismarine pillar. Because you've already got a bunch of quartz on the floor, and I think doing any quartz on the on the ticket booth is going to be a little too much. Why are you taking those parts down? Because I've got to think about it. Okay. On the front. It's part of the process. Okay. The prismarine bricks or the prismarine? The prismarine bricks. Okay. Yeah, the prismarine is not going to fit in that large a quantity. As trim somewhere, maybe, but um, not not as the booth itself. I'd almost say uh, cut the um, change up the back of the booth to be regular prismarine bricks instead of the prismarine that it is. And just leave the prismarine on the floor. Oh, there's your stair. Oh, thank you. Although, I don't know. That, that might be okay. We'll see once it's actually uh, fully prismarine. Yeah, careful with the cacti. Do the, uh... Yeah, just leave this front counter the dark prismarine. And do the rest on the prismarine brick. That's a lot of fish. Are you going to put any that was a uh, long coral? time fishing. Are you going to put any coral fans in there? Oh god, yeah. Not the uh, blocks, but the actual the fans. I was actually going to do a little bit of everything. Um, that's why the middle section is here. The middle section is going to have coral on it. Okay. All right. 
We'll give it a go. Nothing else is gonna be fun! try to leave the Dark Prismarine as a band there. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Well, put the, put the stairs back around the lamps and, uh... Oops. I'm telling you, that quartz is gonna be a little too much. Even though we have quartz around the inside, too? Uh, because we have as much quartz on the inside as we do. Ah. But it looks so pretty with the green. Is there a reason you bypassed the bed that was in the corner of this room? What do you mean? There's a bed in the corner of the hub. Yeah. That's the one I slept in. Oh. Where'd you go? Right Right here. Well, it's like you disappeared. Yeah, connection problems. Um. Yeah, right over there? Mm hmm. Why? No, no, I'm looking at Arcadius's health go down. Ah, uh, okay. Told you those angry fishies are not nice. Well, the XP they give is very, very nice. But they are not nice. No, they are not nice. But we're missing a stair. Mm -hmm. I know. I don't have any more. Alright, uh, oh. <laughs> oh, never mind. Um. I was gonna grab out my backpack and the stone cutter, but that's uh, sitting over there. Seriously? You don't have any more stairs in here? Alright, let me see if I got it in my random project box. There we go. Well, I did use many of them. Did I mention many? Mm hmm. Very many. <clears throat> Alright, and those three too. Do you? I was gonna say leave the front counter of the Dark Prismarine just to give it a little differentiation. Or make it out of wood. Ooh, I like the idea of wood. Nope, the wood. Yep, totally the wood. Maybe do a row of slabs across the top. Uh, the dark prismarine over the top of the map. And the pillars. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Actually, if you'll hand me four slabs. I don't have slabs of this. Give me two two blocks then. I'll make the slabs. I got it. Put it. There we go. Nope. Well, I still gotta fix the back so it's all this stuff, too. Why? No one's gonna see the back. Through the glass on the other side? Is that exposed to the window? Yeah. Oh. It's perfectly centered. Oh. Okay. I was not expecting that. Oh, um, well, it's there. I see that. Well, oh, doors. <laughs> OK, 
I see you're gonna do that one at a time. Uh, yeah. I mean, unless you want to try to figure out how to put all this back together. Yeah, I can get it mostly back together. That's close enough, right? Sure. Is there a reason why you only Can gave you me three slabs? Until that person you built it. No, I gave you four. No, I only got three. No, you have four. They're all up there. No, they're not. One, two, three, four. Oh, yeah. No, so I guess I needed five. Darn it. We need to find a proper home for that ender chest. I want to leave an ender chest over here somewhere. Oh yeah, the inside is not even close to done. I need to finish the decorations first though, because that yeah. informed some other decisions. Do you want the uh, dark oak door, uh, dark oak stairs, to match the trap doors? Yes, please. Okay. I'll do that, and then I'll call the stream. Although it seems like our internet connection might have called it already for me. <laughs> so I might just handle the stairs and then call. <laughs> uh, call it a day? Call it a day. Call it a video. Call it something. But not late for dinner. Ooh. I am a little short on dark oak. That might be something I farm the next time I got more time than I know what to do with. There is plenty in the storage unit. Did I mention plenty? Yeah. It's probably where all mine went. That is a happy puppy I hear rattling his collar. Somebody went to the fridge. That's why he's all excited. He thinks something's gonna happen. I mean, it never does. Well, something but does I, happen. If you go to the fridge. <laughs> yeah, not they for get him. food. He does not. But maybe this time will yes, be the time. Be yeah. Yes. Okay. And now I'm thinking about doing the top in it too. What? You don't think that would help? I think that would make it a little what, less... Doing that part up there or the stairs? Yep. And this guy here. No, that guy up there and this. Oh, the corner? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Alright, I'll, uh... And while Go you're doing it. that, should the fish tank bubble out? Like, come out further here? Or should it... Gotta be careful I do this now. I'm running out of space. Um, Like, it should it come out and arc up so it's kind of like a big circular thing? Or should it just go straight up and then arc over? Uh, I would say straight up. And then put some kind of roof on top, like a... Yeah, I, I almost want to push this glass back one, but then it looks really weird. Yeah, no, you can't really do that, but I can... No. No, it'll look fine straight up. Yeah. Alright. Oh. Seriously. Are you not going to have that glass at the same level as the other glass? I wasn't sure. Okay. It can. I hadn't decided yet. I just didn't want the fishies to get caught. Ah. 
because I'm told that if the surface isn't flat, it's hard for the fishies. Um, ish, yeah. The the pathfinding gets a little weird. Okay, not a little weird. It gets a lot weird. But the same could be said about a lot of different mobs. All right. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, it's not like I'm not gonna have enough fishies. Alright, this is where I say thank you all for joining along as best we did. Um, I apologize about the Twitch issues. I'm going to be talking to somebody about figuring out what my options are for, uh, for increasing the bandwidth or figuring out what's going on and why things are slow. Because, uh, yeah, it's been... I deeply suspect somebody is... We had somebody new move in, and now we're having bandwidth problems. So, yeah. Go, go, Gadget Cable. Um, so hopefully we'll have that fixed. And uh, see you next week at 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern, for where we do this live. And not this normally on Thursdays, but not this Thursday because of the holiday. I do Games Revisited, where we're going through currently Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. The general idea of the show is to go through old games, classic games, and take a, take a look at them, get a good run through what's going on. And um, Okay, <laughs> and go through, go through all the old games and that sort of thing and have a, uh, have a good good look at the classics and we're going through star wars knights of the old republic now that is one that i would definitely recommend paying attention to because it sounds like disney is planning on using the star wars knights of the old republic uh storyline as a potential option for an upcoming trilogy here's hoping they do it well we also do World of Tanks on Fridays at 6 p.m., but not this Friday, because again, the holiday. So this Thursday and Friday is off, but normally, usually, generally, every Thursday and Friday we get a stream going, and Tuesdays as well. So, have fun, enjoy, hopefully I'll get a chance to see you next time, and uh, hopefully I'll have a little bit more to say about the show and where things are going and what other shows are happening. And I will bid you all a good night.